Hey, what's up guys? My name is Fonz and welcome back to Genshin Impact. Today we're going to be continuing our beginner's guide talking about items and resources that I think are the most important in the game and things that you should be looking out for and hoarding. So let's jump right into it. Now these aren't going to be in any particular order. I'm going to be jumping around a little bit, but trust me when I say that all these are super important. So the first item we're going to talk about is going to be the Northlander billets. These are going to be items that you use at the blacksmith to craft prototype weapons. Early on, they kind of show you how to do this. They might even make you do it in a quest, but trust me when I say that these are so rare. They are like insanely rare to the point where I recommend doing more research on which ones you should be making than pretty much anything else in this video. This absolutely requires like the biggest brain decision out of every item in the game, just because they're so rare. Okay, there's maybe one other item that like compares, but that's pretty much it. There's like two items in the game that require this much thought, but you use these items crafted at the blacksmith to make prototypes. It's gonna require some crystal ore and some other stuff. And yeah, you can craft one of those weapons. But like I said, I would highly recommend research the heck out of which weapon you're thinking about making and try to figure out if it's going to work well with the character you're trying to put it on. Don't just make a sword because it looks cool. Make a sword because you need a sword. <laughs> Trust me, I've been playing the game since launch and I've gotten one bow to drop. One. Yeah, it's hard out here. All right, next, let's talk about the rarest item in the game, the crown of insight. You might have heard people talking about, oh, I have this character crowned. If you don't know what that means, essentially when a character levels its talent up, once you upgrade to talent level nine, getting to level 10 actually requires one crown of insight. And it is easily the rarest item in the game. I've been playing since launch. I think I've only missed an opportunity to get one of them. And I only have six and I haven't ever used one yet, but you can see here they're only from limited duration event rewards. So the current event that's going on with Klee, the Wind Bloom Festival, stuff like that, you can earn a crown of insight. Definitely the hardest resource to come by in the game. And this is the item that I was talking about that probably takes the most thought. Because obviously once you get up to leveling an attack past level nine, you're probably pretty far in the game. But in general, the cost of getting a talent from level nine to level 10 is crazy. It costs so much. So yeah, it probably goes without saying, but definitely don't use these just willy nilly. Next up, we got iron chunks, white iron chunks and crystal chunks. So this is going to be your ore in the game. These two are used for various things, different gadgets and doodads. Crystal ore is the big important one. Anytime you see crystal ore out around the world, absolutely pick it up. If you want to pick up ore easier, you can use claymore characters or geo characters. Either of those make it easy to pick up ore. And another tip is I would also mark your map. Whenever you find like a bunch of like ore in one spot, mark it on your map because that'll actually respawn there every couple of days. Super handy. I'm sure there's also some really good maps online of like the best farming routes and stuff like that. So if you're into that, maybe a little Google food might be required. But yeah, crystal chunks are super important because they can actually be turned into the blacksmith. You can turn in 30 of them a day to turn them into mystic enhancement ore, essentially just free weapon XP. Super important and super helpful down the road. Trust me, late game, you will be so happy that you saved up a ton of resources and a ton of mystic enhancement ore, and you never have to worry about leveling a weapon again. Because trust me, when you're getting them as you go, it sucks. So any crystal chunk you find around, pick it up. Mark it on your map, keep moving. And I wanna say kinda early on in this video, pick up everything. Literally everything has a purpose. I promise you, you think that pine cones don't have a purpose? Well, then you must hate hash browns. Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Everything has a purpose. Seriously, pick up everything in this game. Same thing for after you finish a fight, you'll see items like slime condensate or a damaged mask. You'll see these things laying around after you finish your fights. Pick all of them up, like all of them, because you'll need these items down the road to level up your characters. Now let's say for instance that we need more dead ley line branches. That's the item that we need to level up our character and we're out, we don't have any. Here's probably one of my best tips and something that I don't hear enough people talking about. You can see at the bottom that its source is dropped by abyss mages. Well, you've scoured the whole map and you can't find any more abyss mages. Well, if you come over here to your adventure or handbook, scroll down to enemies, get down here to the abyss mages, you can see that it 
it does indeed drop our dead ley line branch that we need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and navigate that on our map and it will literally show us where an abyss mage is. And this works for every enemy type. So whatever enemy's material that you need, go to that spot, kill it, and it'll actually update your map and show you another one. Go to that spot, kill them, and just keep repeating the process. Eventually you'll hit a point where you've killed all of them on the map and it'll say like a 16 hour respawning thing. But if you do this for a couple days, you'll have plenty of those materials to go around. Super handy, probably my favorite tip in this video. I use that to find these materials constantly. Now I know we're jumping around a little bit, but next thing I wanna talk about is gonna be fragile resin. Ooh. Fragile resin is something that I, on a daily basis, struggle with not using. In most events and the battle pass, if you're buying that, you'll be able to earn fragile resin. If you don't know, Genshin Impact has an energy system like any other mobile game that's called resin. It caps you essentially throughout the day. So you have enough resin daily to do like three or four dungeons, maybe a boss run, and then you're done. The idea is they don't want you playing the game all day and grinding out all the content and then being out of content in a month. But what Fragile Resin does is it actually gives you 60 points back to your resin so you can use that for three more domains or maybe two boss runs or whatever you want. But trust me, I would highly, highly recommend holding on to them because there will come a day where you're going to get a new five star character and you need to go out and get them a full artifact set because you haven't been farming for them or you need a bunch of their talent books because you haven't been farming that talent book domain and you will need these, trust me. You don't have to save all of them. Try to save like 10 of them just for a rainy day in case you need it. Because trust me, the second you get that new five-star character, you're gonna wanna spend six hours grinding out everything they need. Just trust me on this. This is future-proofing. The next item on this page that was added recently is actually a really nice quality of life update for Genshin is gonna be the Dream Solvent. Dream Solvent, if you don't know, helps you actually change these items that you get from the weekly bosses because if you don't know the way it used to be is you would get like two or three random items and that was it you just got what you got but let's say you were grinding for devalon's claw for weeks and weeks and you never got one but you have like 20 devalon's plumes now with the dream solvent you can take it to the crafting table and actually swap those items one for one and you can see that you get it from doing like trounce domain so essentially if you fight child devalon ajdaha or boreas you'll get a chance at getting one really nice quality of life item now similar to the dream solvent you also have dust of azoth this if used at a crafting table can actually switch out your crystals that you get from bosses to different elemental crystals so you're going to need those to ascend your character and another quality of life item that can just help you change one color to another so if you've been farming the geo boss and you're out of the crystals but you have a bunch of animal crystals laying around you can use the dust to actually swap it over to geo crystals now next thing i want to talk about is going to be region specific we're going to start off with the animoculus and the geoculus i talk a little bit about this in a different video in this series but as you're going around the map you will find these make sure you go to the statue of the seven turn all these in you get a bunch of xp and you upgrade your stamina it's super helpful the next thing is going to be the shrine of the depth keys which i don't have any because i've unlocked them all if you have any shrine of the depth keys absolutely go use them it's literally just free precious chests sitting around for you if you can't seem to find them go look up a map and you can literally just go hit each location if you get close and it's not glowing it's already open just go find one that's glowing and use the key finally you're gonna have animo and geo sigils basically a currency you can use at the shop in either leeway or monstat there's no real rhyme or reason buy everything in that shop whatever you need at the time just buy it i think that's actually how you get your first billet like prototypes but yeah, buy everything and you'll get to a point where the only thing you can buy is Mora. I honestly let these just kind of stock up and then I'll just go dump it on a bunch of Mora. I actually did it recently. But yeah, you'll get them from just kind of opening chests and doing little events around the world. Now, the last thing I want to talk about are some currencies in the game because some of them are pretty self-explanatory and some of them kind of aren't. Obviously, you're going to have your Mora. That's pretty much used for everything. If you come from Destiny, like most people on my channel, it's Glimmer. Pretty much everything you do in the game is going to have some sort of Mora cost tied to it. So it's a resource that you never want to be running low on. Next up is going to be Masterless Stardust. As you can see, you get it from Wishing, even though right here the source just says Wish. I feel like it's that subliminal messaging joke from Family Guy, where the dude's like, smoke. I feel like Mihoyo's just like, wish. <laughs> But yeah, pretty much every three star item you get, you'll get masterless stardust. And for every four star and five star item, you'll actually get masterless star glitter. Now I'm gonna explain these a little bit because this can be very tempting to go below them. 
Don't go waste these. So if you come up here to the shop and go down to Paimon's Bargains, you have your Star Glitter Exchange, your Star Dust Exchange, and then obviously you can just buy Fates with Primo Gems. So this rolls over like every month. You can buy five Intertwined Fate for 75 Star Dust a piece, as well as five Acquaint Fate. So you do get 10 wishes essentially every month for free if you keep wishing. Ugh. You can also buy Mystic Enhancement Ore for Stardust, and you can buy Mora for 10 Stardust a piece. Keep in mind, after you buy all the Mora, it jumps up to 20 Stardust for 10,000 Mora. So the price doubles. And this you can buy infinitely, and I would not recommend it. Get the discount rated Mora, get you some Mystic Enhancement Ore, get you the Fates, and then get out of there. Now, when it comes to the Star Glitter Exchange, this is the hard one. I don't recommend ever spending Star Glitter on wishes. Unless you're a whale and you just have more Star Glitter than you know what to do with, don't do it. Because as you can see, you can actually buy copies of characters each month. And as of right now, it's actually on a fixed rotation, so you can tell who's coming up. You can also buy the Royal and the Black Cliff weapons. If for some reason you want to buy these weapons, don't buy Royal weapons, buy Black Cliff weapons. They're way better. But me personally, I don't even recommend buying the weapons. If you need a specific weapon type for a new character you got and that's like really good for them, then sure, go for it. The other thing you can spend your Star Glitter and your Stardust on is Ascension materials. Like you can literally spend two Star Glitter for three Slime Concentrate if you need any of these items down here, go to the adventurer handbook, find out what drops what you need and go kill that thing. Don't do this. Last but certainly not least, we have our primo gems and our fates. You have the intertwine fate and the acquaint fate. We've already talked a little bit about these in the character video, but essentially you can buy one fate for 160 primo gems. Now you do you, use them at your own pace. It's gonna depend from character banner to character banner on who you wanna spend them on. As you can see, I've been saving up because I don't want Klee, but I would highly recommend doing quite a bit of research on the character that you're pulling for to see if you really want them. Now, last couple things I'm gonna throw in here because I didn't really have a good spot to put all this. In your quest tab, you're gonna have items similar to this. That might be a treasure map. It might be a little bag of Mora. As you're playing, keep an eye on items that you're getting in this tab because you might be able to turn some of them into treasure or just flat out money. The next tip I have is going to be use your marking system. You can choose any of these little icons to change what it actually looks like and just just use it. If you find food, you know, there's the there's the birds, Timmy's birds that chill out on this bridge every day. Mark that for food. You know, there's a really good cave over here for ore. Mark that with a pickaxe. You get 99 of these little pins. Don't waste them, put them to use. Trust me, you'll be happy you did down the road. Next thing I wanna talk about and something I kinda wish they would just take out of the game or only give it to you when you really need it is the delete button. There's a little button down here that's got a little trash can on it and you can literally click on this and you're like, oh, I don't need these weapons anymore. I can just delete all this stuff, right? Who cares? No, don't do that. There's literally no reason to delete weapons or artifacts or anything. There's just no reason. Because remember, any items that you find can be used as XP for your favorite weapons. I can literally just turn in all of these. Look at all this. Now we're halfway through level 40 on this weapon. Boom, don't delete stuff. I don't know why they give you the option. And the last thing we can talk about here is gonna be our expeditions. You come down here, you can hit dispatch character on expedition, and you can literally send your characters out to collect rewards. Once you get all the way leveled up, you can release five characters a day and you should 100% be doing this every single day. Some characters like Chong Yoon, Bennett and Fischl don't take as long to do expeditions. So make sure you're utilizing those characters and get your free items, man. These are the ones that I do. I always do the ones for the sweet flour and the eggs, as well as the ones for the chicken and the meat, just so I can make sure I can always make at least a little bit of food if I need it. And then the rest of my characters are just mining ore. Like 100%, that's all they do. Now keep in mind, you can use these characters in the field while they're on an expedition. But there you go, there's all the items in the game that I think are the most important that you should be keeping your eye on the most. 
If you have any other items in the game that you're curious about that you don't really know how they work or what they do, drop your comments down below and I'll be happy to explain them. Now keep in mind, these videos are for Genshin Impact players that might need a little bit of guidance that are a little bit lost in some parts of the game. So if you're a veteran, make sure you leave your best tips down below to help out the Genshin Impact community. And if you can't think of one, go down and check the comments and make sure you like the one that you think is the best tip. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope this video helped. If it did, drop a like down below. Remember to subscribe if you guys are new around here if you want to see more Genjin Impact content coming very soon. And before we go, a huge shout out to the members of the channel. Thank you so much for helping make these videos possible. If you yourself want to help support the channel directly, you can by clicking the top link in the description if you're on mobile or clicking the join button if you're on desktop. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. We will see you on the next one.